Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. If you missed it, check out last episode. I went drag racing for the first time in my life and had a blast. So this episode is actually Monty's five point inspection list that I'm gonna go through to make sure the engine's still healthy. Because those of you that don't know, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I rebuilt the engine about 800 miles ago and uh, did a uh, break in oil change at around 200 miles. And now this is uh, my overdue oil change. I should have done it before drag racing, but now 600 miles later, now we're changing the oil again. We're gonna inspect the filter, cut that open, show you what tool I use to cut the filters open and what to look out for. That's really brief. Uh, the second thing I like to inspect are the spark plugs. It doesn't mean I have to change them, just inspecting them. Uh, third thing we'll do is pull the valve covers, retorque the heads, make sure they're torqued. Um, also check the header bolts. And most importantly, we are gonna check our valve lash and adjust where necessary. I'll show you the way I like to do it. If you guys have a recommended way, chime in, let me know. I will be the judge if it's easier or not, <laughs> but other people will learn from your comments as well. So keep it positive. Now, lastly, if we have time, I'm gonna pull the throttle body because I'm really curious to see how that M.E. Wagner PCV valve is behaving. Those of you guys missed that episode, go check that out. It's a really cool solution to improve crankcase ventilation. So I already noticed that I have way less oil consumption than I had in the past, and the reason is of that valve. So I might need to readjust the valve, which is fine. It's, it's the whole process of doing a tune-up or Monty's tune-up. So if you are not subscribed, do so, because next episode, we are gonna revisit the Pontiac head cooling myth. And I have a workaround you guys are going to enjoy because I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna implement it, and we're gonna test it just like we did during the last Mythbusters episode. And there's a link for that if you missed it. So. Let's not get too carried away. Let's get into this project today. Time to cut open the filter. So I let it sit overnight, uh, upside down, let it drain. So it's like 95% empty. But this tool from Summit Racing, I'm sure there's several different types on the market. It's like a pipe cutter. So it's got a, a cutting wheel here, two rollers, or a sideways can opener. So we're just gonna spin this around, open this bad boy up and while I tighten the end. And there it goes. Bam. There's, if you've never seen the inside of a filter, pretty cool looking. And then I'll take this and I'll dump it out on my pan and I'm gonna look for any major debris and you can even take it apart now when you get to the paper part you can take a knife and cut out a section you can lay it flat to see if there's any metal chunks in there and frankly i probably have some left over from my lifter debacle that's why we rebuilt the engine so there's a little bit of debris in there i'm kind of okay with it because you can't get it all sometimes, and that's what the filter's for. So um, I'm going to pour it out, I'll inspect it, go to the next step. Real quick, another thing I like to do is actually, to, when you put your new filter in, is fill up your filter as much as you can with your oil. And surprisingly enough, a quart will fit in, in, this, in the filter. So use that as your math when you refill, and that is... The oil I use per Butler performance. It works well for me. Everyone has their own opinion and that's fine. Feel free to leave what you like to use down below and most importantly where you live and how you drive your car. Oh as well as flat tap it or roller cam. So anyway good stuff to keep in mind. Let's go look at the plugs. Got my plugs out and I love this little tray because it marks the front of the engine here. This is actually for valve train removal. Um, and, but the center hole, you can actually put right on the stud on, the, on your carb or throttle body. So it sits on there instead of the air cleaner. And then as you take plugs out, you put them in. So I know exactly what cylinder they came from. 
and they look fantastic. They might be a little bit on the rich side. So if you guys can see that, what you want to see is you want to see white on the electrode about a quarter of the way down. And then this strap, you should see white all the way to about there. That's actually your timing. So that's good timing and it looks great. It might be a tiny bit on the rich side, but I love it. So all of them look the same. I don't see anything glaringly obvious. So we are all good. I can go ahead and put them back in, but we're not going to do that yet because we need to pull the valve covers and do our valve lash adjustment. And it's best to do that with the plugs out. All right, got our spark plug situated. Those of you guys that have been part of the channel for a while have noticed that I haven't been posting very often. That last scene where I uh, did the spark plugs was three weeks ago. <laughs> I got the flu the next day, uh, fought that for a while, went on vacation, went to Hawaii, got this tan, and now I have a cold. <laughs> so three weeks later, here I am. And I'm trying to get this done because a quarantine cruise is in, uh, at the end of this week and I want to go. So I want to be ready for that. Now, sorry, sorry for the, uh, the drama there, but if you have a, a rebuilt engine and you didn't do yourself, uh, you paid someone to do it, and if they didn't tell you, at 100 miles, you should be doing exactly what I'm doing here, which is retorquing your heads, checking all your bolts, your header bolts, etc., to make sure nothing's come loose, because there's a, who knows what happens when your, your builder built your engine. So for a stock head, it's 95 foot pounds. And for Edelbrock heads like I have, or aluminum heads, and you have ARP fasteners, you can go up to 105. So whatever your uh, number is, talk to your engine builder. If you still have his phone number, <laughs> um, make sure you double check that. Now, if you don't know the sequence, it's really simple. You start in the middle and you work your way out. So there's 10 bolts. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just like that. So make sure your heads are bolted down. The next step here is the most critical, so we need to check our lash. So if you have a, a, a noisy engine that's rattling a lot, as far as valve train rattle, it's probably the preload if you have adjustable um, valve train. And I'll show the details in a second, but I wanna hit the workbench and show you what the guts of a hydraulic lifter look like and what we're trying to do here. Okay, I need to draw, I had to draw a picture for you guys because uh, I know you guys miss me drawing pictures, but this is the best uh, picture I could find online that shows a lifter touching a cam lobe. So all hydraulic lifters have a piston inside them with a spring that holds the oil pressure and acts as a shock absorber for these impact loads when we're pushing our uh, valves up and down rapidly. So each lifter has a stroke, a maximum amount of stroke that that piston can move before it bottoms out. Now, every manufacturer of a hydraulic lifter has a recommended preload. So these are Johnson lifters and these are standards. So these are 35 thou, so it's hard to read. Come on, focus, focus. 35 thou plus or minus 10. That's the recommended preload. Now, if you have a really high RPM, engine you can actually get lower preloads this is actually a smaller distance so there's not the oil quantity required to keep it pressurized is lower but that's typical of most lifters this is going to be a typical um, scenario and if you don't know I'll, I'll walk you through that when we get to the engine so our goal here is 35 thousandths was the is the target plus or minus 10 so we can go up to 45 or down to 25 but how do we determine how much that is on this nut? Well, ironically enough, this screw that the nut is attached to has a 50 thousandths lead. And when you talk about a lead on a screw, that's how far the nut travels when you rotate the nut one time. So you rotate the, one, the nut one time down, it just went 50 thousandths. So granted, it's not going to be exactly 50 thousandths over here. We're going to have a little bit of angle, but it's going to be really close. So when we turn this nut to get to 35, that's past halfway, almost three quarters. And we can even go up to 45, which is almost a full turn. So keep that in mind when I get to it in the engine. Now, when we, before we do that, we have to make sure that our cam lobe 
is on the base circle. Like you don't want to be adjusting this when the lifter is over towards the lobe. You want the lifter to be over on the opposite side of the lobe. So that's the base circle. That's what they call the base circle right here. So we want it on the base circle. So let's go jump back to the engine and I'm gonna show you my trick to get it on the base circle for every valve. Okay, before we get started, I do not have COVID-19. I think I have COVID-12, so we're good there. <laughs> now you're gonna need a few tools. Green tape, I'll explain that in a second. You're gonna need some kind of tool if you have poly locks, I'll show you what those are if you have an adjustable valve train. I like this one the best. You can also use a standard 5 8 inch wrench and an Allen wrench. And your favorite tool to rotate your crank. So I have an ARP bolt on there, so I have this uh, 12 point socket. That's why the spark plugs are out of the engine because it makes it really easy to turn the engine over. Now let's jump up to a closer view of the rocker because I want to show you how to get to the back side of the lobe accurately. All right, we're on the passenger side, and there are several ways to actually uh, pick which valve to adjust. One of those is where you turn the crank 45 degrees at a time, and then there are two valves that are on the base circle, like an intake on, say, two, and then on six, you'd, or on seven, you'd have the exhaust valve to adjust. That kind of works, and I say that because some some of us have different timing for our cam, and you do not know if you're approaching your lobe lift, which can screw up your settings. The other thing is, that gets confusing. For example, I'm already thinking about having a beer, even though I shouldn't because I'm sick, but, uh, you know, say I have that beer, I go get the beer, and I forget where I am. I don't know what valve I'm at. So you have to do a good job marking where you are, and then even then, you have your beer and then I have to go pee now. Now you have to go hit the head and now you lost your, your train of thought. So, you know, the drama I have to go through. Now, what I like to do is one at a time, front to rear. So in order to find where we're at on the base circle, we want to be the polar opposite of the lift. So I'm going to go, go ahead and slowly rotate the crank and you'll see the, um, the valve go all the way down and right as it starts to come back, we're gonna stop. So let's check it out. Okay, it's going down. Still down. Now it's coming back up. Start to come back up, you stop. Now, let me show you what we do to mark our crank pulley. Grab a piece of tape, put a handle on it by putting folding one end over, because you're gonna be reusing this piece. I'm going to put it on the crank where I can see it right there. And we're going to go ahead and rotate the crank 360 degrees because one rotation of the crank is a half a rotation on the cam. So while I rotate that, let's go watch that valve. Okay, I'm going, I'm only a quarter of the way. You can see we're near the base circle. But to guarantee we're at the base circle, we're going to go that full 360. And that's right there. So now I know I'm at the very back of that cam. And I can test this to see how it is. And it actually feels really good. I can barely rotate it, which makes sense. As long as you can't move it axially, and you can rotate it barely, you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and show you what it looks like. I'm going to crack this loose. There we go. And inside this, what's called a poly lock, is the nut, but inside there's a set screw. So you're gonna to wanna to loosen that a whole bunch of turns just to get you some play in there. Now, if you have stock valve train, you don't have these poly locks, it's just an, a lock nut on there. You wanna find the base circle again, but just tighten that to 20 foot pounds. It's that easy with stock valve train. So we're gonna put this back on and this is what you do for adjustable, is you, you wanna make sure there's no axial play here. So you guys can see that. There's two tricks there. You can tighten it, the nut, at the same time as you're feeling the push rod. You can either get to the point where you have no axial play or some, you get really good at it, you can spin it, keep spinning it and turning the nut. As soon as you feel some drag, 
on spinning the push rod, you're at zero. So once you're there, now we have to set our preload. Remember we talked about that earlier? Mine is three quarters of a turn. If you do not know, here's what you do. You do a half a turn. So do all your settings at a half a turn. Run your engine. If it's clackety clackety clack clack, you gotta do this again, but add an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn and do it again. Because that's where most adjustable uh, preloads are is between a half and three quarters of a turn. So like I said earlier, if you have a specialized lifter in there, you might have an eighth of a turn or a quarter turn. So just be careful with that. But if you don't know, always start with a half, I think is safe. So now when I do my three quarter, that's why I like this tool so much because I can go perfectly vertical with this tool. There's um, half and then three quarter is right there. Now we can tighten that set screw while we hold the lock nut. We're not done yet. Now we're holding both. We're going to tighten it another eighth of a turn as far as we can go. Like that. That locks it in place. A lot of people forget that last maneuver and you'll end up with loose nuts running down the road, which is never good. So that's that. I'm going to go through every one and I haven't forgotten. The last step after I'm done with this is we're going to check our PCV valve and see if I'm getting oil through that. Be right back. All right, got my PCV valve out. And if you've never seen one of these, this thing is awesome. It's a ME Wagner PCV valve. It's got two. It's got a low pass, high pass valve in the bottom. This thing is awesome. If you have not seen my video about it, go check it out. It's in that list right there. But, or search my channel for M.E. Wagner uh, PCV valve. This solves all kinds of problems. Sludge in your oil, uh, your oil lasts longer. If you have massive oil leaks due to poor crankcase ventilation, this is your solution. Highly recommend them. Now the reason I pulled it is that every time you do like a tune-up, you should check it to make sure you're not sucking oil. And check this out. No oil! and it's dry. This is totally dry, which has shocked the hell out of me. I thought this would be oily. Oh my God, so impressive. But you need a proper baffle. So if you haven't, if you're a Pontiac guy, you need the right um, valley pan that has a proper baffle in it, which I have now. It's, uh, I also did a video on that too. So search my channel for valley pan, you'll see it. But I am totally impressed with this. I will do another um, check and just like I did in my video to, to set this, just to make sure, um, because you should do that every tune-up anyway, because you never know what changes. And uh, man, super happy. I'm gonna put this back in. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you learned a lot today. And speaking of learning, if I've ever helped you out in a video, consider getting a hat. There's a link below, three different colors represent, you know? So next week, we're gonna modify the cooling system of my Pontiac engine. So those of you that have Pontiac engines know that heating or cooling your engine can sometimes be difficult. I already did one myth busting test and based on that input, I'm gonna make some major changes. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.